my name is Dwayne Bland and welcome to the NSDA. Today we're going to take a look at body checking. We're going to go through some fundamentals and some real basic concepts for young players getting into body checking or body contact. There is a little bit of a difference when you think of body checking and body contact. Body contact happens all over the rink, on the wall, whether you're playing checking or not. Body checking is when you're going in to try to separate the man from the puck and make that check. So contact, you're going to have incidental contact throughout a game, even at young ages. But body checking is when those players are kind of getting into that peewee and especially Bantam now, uh, where body checking is going to be another skill that's going to be introduced to a player. When we talk about body checking, one of the biggest things is being aware. And we've got other videos on this too, but keeping that head up and being looking at a 360 degrees. So when I, if I'm skating down the ice, being aware of where other players are around me and making sure that my head's up and I'm looking and I'm, I'm scoping at where players are coming, where contact might be coming from and where I'm going to be getting that hit. Another big area of focus for players entering body checking is making sure that their body is prepared to take a hit or to give a hit. And how we do that is going back to our basics of that hockey player position. So our head up, again, we're looking around, our knees bent and our shoulders over top of our knees. And making sure we're on the ball of our foot. And anytime a player gets caught on their heels in checking, they're gonna go down. If they're too far on their toes, it's gonna be hard to stay up. But staying on the ball of their feet, now they can absorb contact or they can make contact much better by being in a good, strong position. And our power when we're checking is gonna come from our legs. Right? And there's three main areas that you can check with. You can check with your shoulder, right? Obviously both sides, with your shoulder. You can check with your hips. So if you're coming in on a player, you can check with that hip. And you can check with your hands. You can't check with one hand at a time because that's going to be a roughing penalty, but you can check with both hands as you're coming in to hit a player. You got to make sure those hands are together and you're not swinging one or the other at one time. If we had young players, one of the things we'll do just to introduce young players to body checking or body contact is staying low on their feet, so ball their feet, and then just coming in and bumping each other. So with, when you talk about checking, timing is huge. If I come in too early and I get caught here and then Max comes in and hits me, I'm going to go down. So making sure our head's up, we're looking, and now we're coming in and timing it together so we're gonna hit at the same time. And again, we're pushing with our legs. So if I come in and make contact shoulder to shoulder with Max, my knees are bent, I'm gonna come in and push and then try to use those legs to power through on that hit. All right, another thing too that's really important is watching the most important area of our body, obviously, is our head. So if I come in and make that contact with Max, I don't wanna lead with my head, and I also wanna be aware of Max's head or my opponent's head, and I do not wanna hit that person in the head, right? That's gonna obviously be a head check and you know, could be a suspension if it's bad enough. But when I come in here, I wanna keep my head protected so my head's away, I'm leading with that shoulder and I'm coming in and hitting with our shoulder. And a lot of times when players finish hits, it looks worse than it is, but if I come in here and I finish my hit and as I follow through, that elbow comes up, right? That's where I've gotta be aware of not hitting him in the head and watching how I follow through. And you also see a lot of players that neglect their stick. So they come in to make that hit and their stick's up here and now they're gonna get called for a high stick or it's gonna look way worse than a shit. So controlling that stick, keeping that stick out of the way and low as they're making contact with players. But a lot of times we'll have players coming back. We'll come back here, Max. And when we get started, we'll have them go, we'll go up forward and we'll come back backwards. And we'll come up forward and on every whistle or I'll say bump for this one, but <clears throat> every time I say bump, we'll come in and kind of bump each other or hit each other. So we're gonna come skiing forward, we'll go bump and then we're gonna come in and hit and bump, and we'll come in and hit. And then we do the same thing going backwards. So backwards, same thing, coming in and bump, and then bumping each other. Coming in and bump, and bumping each other. You hit really hard, eh? <laughs> uh, but just getting, get, getting uh, players comfortable with making that contact and making that hit uh, and bumping each other as they're going through. I'm gonna go through real quick, just a couple different hits that you'll see um, along the wall. So number one, one thing that we try to emphasize with, with young players is if I'm coming in to hit Max, and let's say Max is carrying the puck up the ice, all right, I want to hit Max in front. First of all, the number one reason we play contact or add contact to a game is to separate the player from the puck, right? And the most crucial part of a player's body is going to be their hands and stick. So if I make contact with his shoulder, I want to try to take out his hands and his stick so that I can get that puck away or take him out of the play. So if I'm coming in, I'm going to hit shoulder, but I'm going to hit him out in front. So I'm going to hit him here, and then I'm going to come in and try to get that stick out of the way, and then I can get that puck moving, all right? Another way is just kind of bumping him off, so hitting him in the shoulder and then trying to take off and just slowing him up. So again, separating the player from the puck. If we're skating on the boards, coming in and just making contact and then continue on trying to get that puck or finishing the play. 
And one other thing that we start to talk to, to, to young players about is hitting and pinning. Especially in the D zone, if you're playing defense or you're forward helping out down low and you've got a player, one thing we want to watch is we don't want to hit that player from behind, right? If I see numbers or the back of a player's jersey, I don't, I don't want to hit, right? I, I, can, I can pin, but I don't want to hit. So if I'm coming in and we're side by side, I'd hit in the shoulder, I'd try to turn that body into the boards, and then I'd drive that knee in between his feet in order to not let him jump over, or get over, or get moved out of the way. So ideally, I'm going to move that shoulder in, and then I'm going to try to pin him right, on the wall in order for a teammate to come in and help out or someone to come in and make a play off that. Body checking against the boards is going to be a common type of hit. There are going to be open ice hits, or there are going to be plays that are going to be made in the open. So if Max does have the puck and I'm going to come in and hit him, one of the key concepts for young players is to talk about angling. So if you're working with your young players as a coach or a parent on hitting, angling is going to be huge. So if I'm coming in to hit Max, if I go straight at Max, now I'm giving him some outs. So if I'm going right at him, he can cut left or right, and it's going to be really hard for me to line him up. But if I come in on a bit of an angle, so if I come out this way a little bit, now Max is forced to go that way, and now I can come in and make my hit or make my play, right? And even in open ice, so if Max is coming up the ice this way, and I want to make that hit on him, and I come this way, now I'm forcing him that way, and now I can come in and try to finish my hit and separate the player from the puck. So angling is a big, big concept that I think coaches and parents and players need to understand, obviously, and it needs to be taught to these young players in order for them to properly make body, body checking part of their game. Just like any other skill, right, checking needs to be practiced and worked on and taught. Uh, but when we talk about open ice hits and, and trying to, trying to you know, separate that player from the puck in open ice, timing is going to be huge. So making sure that players understand that if they go 100 miles an hour at a player, it's going to be hard to make that contact. They need to slow it down sometimes and time how they're going to make that contact. And what I mean by that is if Max is skating with that puck, I can't go right at him, right? So I'm going to angle him, but I also have to time where he's going. And a lot of times what happens is if I go like this and I'm pushing him this way and Matt goes to cut back, players will try to adjust by moving out and then sticking that knee out or sticking a leg out or sticking an arm out. And that's where you're going to get into penalty trouble or injured. And that's what we don't want, right? Whenever we're playing contact, we don't want to, we want to avoid injury as much as we can. So putting yourself in a tough spot is obviously not recommended. So if I, again, if I'm coming in on Max and I angle him this way, and now Max cuts back on me, and I go to stick that leg out, now we've got a bit of a knee on knee, which is terrible, right? And there's been a lot of injuries like that, but making sure that we don't adjust. So if I time it properly, and I angle properly, then I can push him to the area that I want him to go, and then make contact when that timing is right. One last thing to talk about is a forward defense. So if I'm a defenseman going backwards and Max is attacking me, right, I want to try to line line up my shoulders so well, let's say we're coming down the ice this way just to make it a little bit easier so max is coming down the boards right i want to ideally line up my shoulder with his my inside shoulder so my board side shoulder to his shoulder that's the that's in the middle of the ice if i'm too far over here now i'm giving him a lot of room and if i'm too far on this side here now i'm giving him an, op an option to go this way so if he is coming down the boards i want to stay just off his shoulder so as he's coming now i can ride him that way and start pushing him to the wall now if he does cut back on me now i can step in and make that play oftentimes with young d especially when they start getting into checking they want to hit so bad sometimes that they're going to go right at that player and if i'm too aggressive with max and he's a good player coming at me and i'm aggressive and i kind of go at him now he's going to make a move and go right by me and you'll see this a lot with young players getting into checking they'll try to chase the hit sometimes they'll try to jump into the hit a little bit more you got to be a little more patient with it and let that come to you and a lot of good checkers a lot of good hitters at the nhl level you'll see them set guys up and they'll kind of and it's not about making that big hit to knock a player down or anything like that Again, it's just to separate that man from the puck or that player from the puck. So as, as he's coming in, I want to set Max up. So as he's coming in, I'm going to push him that way. I'm going to keep my stick here so he doesn't cut to the middle. And then when I feel like it's right, then I can make my contact, separate the player from the puck, and then make that play. So we just talked about, we just talked about the D's perspective on that one-on-one, -on -one, but now the forward's perspective. So if the forward is coming down the boards, there's an area around the ice called the danger zone. And it's all around the ice, right? about three feet away from the boards. And what that danger zone is, is right in here. So anywhere kind of a stick length away from the boards to half a stick length away from the boards. And what happens there in, in, in checking is if I hit max right now, 
he's in a bad spot. If I hit him, he's gonna get hit, and then he's gonna end up hammering the boards, and who knows what could happen from there. So if, if a player's in the danger zone, they have two options. They're either gonna get out of the danger zone, so cut more to the middle and get away from it, or they're gonna go tight to the boards. So again, going back to that one-on-one, -on -one, if I'm the D and I, and I did a good job angling Max over the boards, really, really common for players is they stop moving their feet. They know they're gonna get hit and they just kind of sit there like a sitting duck and just kind of glide into that, guy, into that player. And the key here is for that player to continue moving their feet. Now, just because I'm gonna make contact on Max doesn't mean Max can't hit me back, right? Even though he's got the puck, he can still make contact on me. So as I'm skating back and I'm about to hit him, he can come into me and push up against me and then keep going. And if his feet are moving and he's skating and he's driving, odds are if he's tight to the boards and I come in to hit him, he's gonna be fine. And he's probably gonna have more momentum than I am in order to keep going by me, right? If I make a good hit on him, that's fine. I separate the player from the puck, that's my job's done. But if Max does a good job and kind of counter hits me and keeps his feet moving, now maybe we're in a bit of a battle or he, he maintains possession of the puck. But it's very important for those fours not to get stuck kind of in that glide position just waiting to get hit, right? Even though they're getting contact, they can always hit back, use their legs and power through that player that's, that's about to make contact with them. There's a couple easy, quick little concepts on hitting. And if you are a coach that's gonna introduce hitting to your team because you're getting into hitting or you're just starting to introduce contact, it's really, really important that players understand what their body's doing when they're making contact and when they're receiving contact. And as we show it on the boards, you don't have to receive contact. You can always counter, you can always hit back. So even though I got a player coming in to hit me, I can always bump back on that player and be ready for that hit. Where players get stuck in tough spots and get vulnerable is when they get scared or they're not sure what to do and they open up. So if I'm on the boards here and a player comes in to hit me, and I kind of freeze up or I open my shoulder up, now I'm getting, now I'm in a tough spot where that player can hit my shoulder, I can get hurt, right? If I'm aware and my body's in, in, in good position, my feet are moving, now I can take contact much better and hopefully avoid injury and have way more success with body contact. So as we mentioned in the video, body checking and body contact, although a little bit different, very, very similar, right? Contact is gonna be anytime you make contact with a player. It could be incidental, it could be something that happens by accident, could be in, even in non-checking league, you'll have some incidental contact. And body checking is more of that going after a player to separate the player from the puck. So body checking, just like every other skill in hockey, is a hockey skill. And the only way to get better at those skills is by practicing and working at it. So if you're a coach or a player that wants to get better at checking, the only way to get better at it is practice. Whether you're at home with your parents, practicing on your mom and your dad or your brother, the more you can practice taking a hit and giving a hit, the better you're gonna be able to perform on the ice.